Things are changing in Hollywood, my friends. This is Tony. Hope you're all doing well. I'm gonna cover a lot of stuff. In this video, I've got Acolyte. This latest new Star Wars series is not exactly doing too well. We'll get into that. We're gonna get into a ton of stuff, actually. Something about a YouTuber who said he went to one of these parties. Now, what kind of parties am I talking about? Only a few people get to go to these parties, my friends, and I'm sure you know what I'm referring to. We'll get into also the famous rapper who also recently made a huge list. We'll get into that. Actually, he had two different lists come out. We'll get into the list and all the people involved. We'll get into Keanu Reeves some. We're going to talk about the TV show, The Boys, and what's going on there. It's kind of uh, interesting how it's changed so much since season one. We'll get into some stuff that George Lucas said and much more. So, of course, I'm referring to P. Diddy. I think you've heard that name before. Apparently, he came out recently, and it's kind of weird. You know, you see this guy, any other person who has all the stuff that's going on in his life, in their life, they would already be locked, of course, up. You know, it would be game over. But for some reason, this guy is still riding his bike around, uh, you know, he's just having fun with his life. And now apparently he's given us a list of people, the list, and it has a lot of people on it, some famous people. And Alicia Keys is one of them, says that he's basically listing half of Hollywood as part of it. So we're going to get into that in this video. Wonderful things going on all around us, my friends. Uh, it's interesting because you would think they would want that guy already gone because he knows too much stuff, right? Or is it they're going to just paint him as crazy? Maybe that's what they're going to do. They're going to make him like Kanye. He's just going to be a little bit of this, right? While he's walking around free still. It's interesting. It reminds me of that guy with an island. Remember how that all ended, right? Of course, you have Wendy Williams here. Told her studio audience saying the activity would frighten her. He can hire a plane right now, land it on the roof of the hotel. She's staying, pay people off at the front desk. Give me a key and let me go up into, of course, her room. Referring to P. Diddy, of course. Oh, that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> Apparently, she thinks he has a lot of uh, know-how, you know, get things done, whatever he wants. I don't know if that's really the case, but maybe it has more to do with the fact that so many people, of course, went to his parties and they want to stay in business. They don't want things to happen, of course, to them. That could have a lot to do with it. I don't know. Just a wild guess. But like I said, we're going to get into a ton of stuff. I wanted to get into the Star Wars a little bit. Because it's it's a train wreck. We have this Acolyte new show. And apparently both of these ladies here, directors, are lesbian. And... What's interesting is the storyline, of course, to this movie or this TV show. Uh, they've been changing a lot of the Star Wars lore in the show. And apparently it's becoming one of the most disliked Star Wars series ever. And what was really interesting, the one that really got me laughing and thinking, what is going on here? Was this article here. The Acolyte makes massive retcon. To Star Wars lore reveals lesbian space witches created the life from the Force long before Darth Plagueis. So apparently they've literally taken the entire root of Star Wars, the entire storyline that's already been well established, that the Force was created by Darth Plagueis, and now they've decided to make it essentially, no, that's not true. Actually, it was a bunch of lesbian space witches that actually created the force. Yes, indeed. Actually, there's a witch coven. I'm not joking. This is literally the show. Okay. It's like a witch coven created the force. And they didn't even call it the force. They don't even respect it enough to call it the same name. They call it the thread. So these, these witches created the thread, which then was stolen by the Jedis. Stolen by the Darth Plagueis and, and repackaged as the force. And apparently these women, because they're so strong in the threat or force, they were able to make their own kids without men. I am not joking. This is literally the show, okay? 
<laughs> I mean, honestly, you would think this would be like space balls, right? Like it's a joke. Like, are you joking? This is space balls, right? Ha ha ha. Lesbian space witches. That's an interesting one. I've never heard that one before. But no, that's not what it is. And of course, that's not where the end with the whole changing of the Star Wars universe or multiverse. Where that's the latest word they use, you know, Marvel multiverse, Star Wars multiverse, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So the Star Wars universe. They also took the Conehead here, who happens to be a Jedi, apparently. I forgot this guy's name. Um, we'll just call him, we'll call him uh, Keanu Monday, all right? That's apparently the, the name they came up with to sort of explain who he is, because it's a little hard to pronounce otherwise. Uh, <laughs> the Conehead Jedi, apparently, uh, has changed so much of the lore as well. Just things he said, uh, saying that the Jedi... Uh, the Sith have been around, hasn't, haven't been around for thousands of years. So they, like I said, they completely changed the original storyline of the Force, the original sort of like the, the proto canon of Star Wars to being something completely different. Lesbian space witches is what they turned changed it into. And then they say if you don't like this, it's because you're an ism of some sort. You don't like women or something like that. I'm like seriously. Like, if I take a, a movie that's well-beloved by everybody, it's been around for decades, and it just completely changed the original root storyline and say, no, actually, it was all a lie. Really, it was just this that started the whole thing. That would offend anybody that was a fan of the whatever movie we're talking about. It doesn't matter what you believe or what you think about any topic. You're not going to like that. I mean, people get... If you take a book, a book series, like whatever, like Lord of the Rings, and you make a movie out of it, they get offended by one little detail that's different. Not you changing the entire story saying they lied about the whole thing, right? So, of course, a lot of people are having fun talking about this online. And, of course, some people who are on the side of the directors of this new Star Wars series, Acolytes, we have these uh, sort of like Wikipedia sort of websites, one called Wookiepedia right here, of course, referencing Wookiees. But uh, this website here is all on board with these changes and changing the whole entire story of Star Wars to be, you know, lesbian space witches and stuff like that. And of course, he was in real time changing facts and data about the whole topic of the storyline. And people were calling him out for it. Uh, we had Star Wars Theory actually calling him out for it. And apparently, as a result, there was like some sort of verbal fight between them. And now, apparently, it's gotten to the point where he actually might sue them, which is kind of interesting. But at any rate, so you get kind of what's going on with the whole Star Wars thing. We're going to get into like a, a ton more stuff, obviously, a ton of other stuff in this video. We're going to talk about uh, the Diddy Meister, what he's talking about. Now, uh, yes, indeed, he's he's got this list of people. And actually, there's multiple lists. We got the the one of those that went to the parties. We got the ones that benefited from all this stuff. We got all these wonderful things. I'm being sarcastic uh, to talk about, of course, the fact that they were also doing this with YouTubers. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Allegedly, allegedly, all this is allegedly, my friends. This guy here claims it. I don't know if he's just making a story up or if he's telling a real story, but apparently a lot of people believe what he, he said. Uh, 1.4 million views six months ago. And we'll get into that video. He wishes he never went to a certain party. Now, as he said, it was back in his early days of YouTube. They were all invited out. Got to make sure they're on board, you know, to get them on board early. Right before they blow up, of course, in uh, views and things like that. And he talks about that. We'll get into that a little bit. But uh, first, of all, I got to mention food supply, 25 year shelf life. Link is in the description. Four weeks worth for $177. you are going to definitely want to get this, my friends. And you can easily add on more months just by clicking this. And actually, if you were wanting to get the three-month one here, it's actually cheaper to just click three here and hit add to cart. It's only like $530 versus $697. So definitely, if you want three months, just click three on this and click add to cart. Link is in the description for that. Of course, this book here. The Lost Ways, How Your Great-Great-Grandfather Lived Without Electricity, How About a Seller Do Things Around the House Like They Did in the Old Days, Considering All the Wonderful Things Going On Around Us, My Friends, All the Way Through the Rest of the Year. You know all this wonderful stuff coming. 
you're gonna definitely want to have that book who knows what we'll be seeing uh power you know outages uh world war who knows uh, whatever they got in store for us you want to be prepared get that book it's like 37 dollars plus shipping link is in the description of course also gold and silver real actual money link below go check that out i'm sure you know you've noticed that the the paper money that you've been carrying around in your wallet isn't exactly as uh valuable as it used to be <laughs> you might have noticed that i told you guys I went to San Francisco airport as I was flying back to where I live from the Philippines on vacation. And I spent $105 on two burgers, two hot dogs, and a, I think two fries and two salads and two drinks. $105. No joke. Uh, now, if you don't want that to be $200, hopefully something changes because this inflation just keeps going up. You're going to definitely want to get gold and silver because it doesn't change value or it doesn't lose its value. It actually retains it. Link is in the description. You see how fast your money's losing value. So let's get back to the video. So we got a lot to talk about. We have here, of course, Joe Rogan naming 13 celebs shown in ditties. Of course, you know, party videos and things of that nature. You have Meek Mill here, of course. And his explanation here is a little strange. Why he wanted to continue to go back to his place had nothing to do with, uh, you know, things like uh, deals and other stuff. No, instead, it just had to do with he loved him. And and, and he got a little bit of a, I, mean, I don't even know if I want to read this here. <laughs> uh, he said he ran red lights just to get to his house. Uh, that sounds a little strange. All right. <laughs> this is that feeling you all weird on here like devils i think he's trying to say like he gets this weird feeling and wants to go there that's strange all right i don't know i don't know about you but <laughs> that sounds a little strange to me so of course also we have tia camp here nobody wants to see your louis vuitton outfit sneakers nobody will, don't care to see your jets no more you're running out of women now go over there and give diddy a hug go ride the bike with him <laughs> Of course, he was seen over on an island right off the coast of Florida, riding his bike around, taking selfies with fans and stuff like that. That's who Tia Camp's referring to. Of course, she's talking about uh, this particular man here, uh, Roja, and the rapper. That's who she's talking about when she wrote all this here. Uh, apparently, because he was there as well at a lot of those, of course, parties. And I'm sure at first glance, when you go there, it's probably just like this YouTuber guy. He says he thought it was just going to be a fun party. You know, just some cool, interesting party. Go over there, and then he finds out it's definitely not what he thought. <laughs> he went there with his friend, who also was a top YouTuber at the time. And he says he hasn't made, he hadn't made videos in like seven years or something. This guy's name's Dougie. Uh, and it I'm trying to remember what how it went, because I actually watched this about... What was it? I think I watched this like a few, like like ten days ago or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but um, so apparently, yeah. Here we go. So the the first video he made, according to what I'm looking at here, uh, look, I gotta pull this up right. Um, I gotta and here wrong. Let's get this up right. Um, where is he at? Goodness gracious, doing good here. Uh, okay, I think it right here. So the earliest video he has on his channel is nine months ago, and I can't even show it on the screen, right? Uh, nope. Nope. There it is. You can see that nine months ago. Now, according to him, he hadn't made videos in seven years. He just out of nowhere started making videos nine months ago. And this guy says in his video that the reason why he didn't make videos for seven years is because he was very concerned about what happened at this party because apparently he he said okay i'm out i'm getting out of this place because they had different rooms so you come into this one room and i'm just gonna i mean i'm gonna totally butcher his story but it was something to the effect of you went into one room and they're all just talking nice and happy then they went into a new room and every time the clock alarms or whatever they have to go into a new room so he goes in this new room and they're just eating like crazy and it's just dropping food on the ground it's kind of weird. He's like, what are, why are they eating like this, right? It's just kind of weird. 
And then they go into the next room and they just start insulting each other, just saying the most mean stuff to each other. He's like, what is going on? This is not a party. What is this? Of course, some are saying, well, maybe it's the seven deadly sins, like gluttony, uh, you know, just like you're going through and you got to do each one of these things. And then you come to the final room where you have to, well, actually the, the room before the final room, you got to do something that's pretty dastardly. To, and he just like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm just not going to do that. Uh, he had to like forsake his own religion or something. Like they actually put up a, a Quran or a Bible there and they're like, you have to say you're your own God and you don't need this anymore, right? That was actually the second to last room, according to him. And he said, look, I'm not going to do that. It's, I'm, I'm not going to forsake my own religion and say I'm a God, right? And then the the last room, you have to actually do that to get in the last room. So he he bowed out and they're like, okay, no problem. Just he went out the door. They, they rushed him out the, uh, the, the closest door. And apparently he was supposed to just go back to the parking lot, but he didn't do that. He went to look through the window on the last room to see what they're doing. And that's when the real dastardly things happen, okay, according to him. And again, like I said, who knows if he's just making this up, but this is according to him. He said this is why he hasn't made videos in seven years and just started making videos again. And he says, basically, he sees them doing stuff that you don't want to talk about. Let's just put it that way. And this was part of the deal to get promoted. Now, I don't know if this is true. Who knows, right? This sounds kind of like the whole the whole rapper guy there, what's going on with him, right? Similar kind of thing. Of course, maybe with a little bit of, of course, cameras and stuff like that, right? Never know. I don't know if it's true. Who knows? Now, interestingly, after that, he had caught up with one of his one of the friends that actually went into the last room and told him like you know what's going on and, and his friend was just acting like nothing happened like like it was just a completely normal party he's like bro i went and saw what was happening in the last room i saw it through the window and his friend's demeanor completely changed and he got angry and called one of the people that was part of it and ever since apparently this guy claims he's been people have been chasing after him going into his house, doing, just changing things around, like adding stuff to his refrigerator, changing his batteries around, you know, fixing his car, which is kind of weird. Like, and of course, if you went to the police saying, look, somebody fixed my car, they'd be like, you're crazy, right? Like somebody went into my house and changed the batteries in my TV remote. They're like, I think you're, you know, something wrong with you, dude, right? So of course they're going to do, I mean, if they were going to do something, that would make perfect sense. That'd be a good way to do it because then everyone would just think you're this, and then no one will believe you. And then seven years later, you make a YouTube video, right? So that's what he did. <laughs> Go check it out if you want to check it out. Uh, but like I said, so kind of reminded me of this whole thing with Did Didmeister, right? And um, we'll call him the Didmeister. Of course, we had Bishop T.D. Jakes go, go there. Totally innocent. The dude is a good pastor. I'm just joking. I don't think so, actually. I think, I, honestly... Honestly, all the top ministers, I mean, literally, basically all of them, uh, just name any, even the ones you think are good, I think you got something going on. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong, but uh, I, I've seen a lot of interesting stuff sort of making me believe that over the years, over the last decade, including people that are like you would think are squeaky clean because a lot of those squeaky clean guys, you'll hear about it. Like there was just one the other day. Who was that? Um, it was it was a famous pastor too. It was a uh, what was that guy's name? Um, it was an African American dude. Uh, can't remember his name. He's like a famous, really popular. Let me see if I can find this preacher. Caught. Let's see if it'll come up to the top of the page here. No, they're just showing Kenneth Copeland there. Uh, let's see here. No, not T D Jakes. Ah, uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. He's really famous too, man. He's on the, he's on it. He's like one of those famous Calvinist dudes. I can't remember his name though. Tony Evans. I think it was Tony Evans. Was it Tony Evans? Evans stepping down, right? Here we go. They didn't, they unmentioned what it was that he was stepping down for though. They unmentioned it. They didn't mention it. It's like every one of these guys, even the ones that are the most squeaky clean, Tony Evans stepping down. And I've seen this like, it's like a ridiculous thing at this point. You clearly know something's going on here. This isn't just random. But perhaps there's some of this going on where they go to a party, kind of like T.D. Jakes did there, and they get 
recruited. And then next thing you know, they get caught, like Carl Lentz or T Tony Evans or T.D. Jakes or whoever at this point, pretty much everybody. Pope Francis maybe next. I don't know, man. <laughs> Honestly, who knows at this point. So you see all this going on. It makes you kind of wonder uh, just a little bit, right? And, of course, what's interesting about Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves, he reminds me of like – he reminds me of some of these good actors that that they, they they have principles and they end up not getting parts for a long period of time. He was he was out for 14 years. Fox would not put him in a movie because he rejected Speed Two. He rejected doing that movie because he thought it would just not be a good movie. They put him out for 14 years. Like he couldn't get it, and then he had to do his own movie. And that's what's interesting. I've noticed that a lot of these guys that uh, they have like some sort of backbone and want to do the right thing, they end up not getting movies for like 10 years, and then they end up having to do a grassroots movie that takes off. He did The Matrix, which, by the way, The Matrix was not promoted whatsoever. That movie was uh, like a wing and a prayer. I mean, honestly, he actually invested, from what I understand, some of his own money. It was a low-budget film, and he was supposed to get 20% of the profits from the film because they, they couldn't pay him for it. It was too cheap of a movie they couldn't even pay him so he's like hey just give me 20 percent of the profits and the movie was a hit and he ends up getting super rich off it right but that was the movie he ended up coming back on and that was like 1999 so he was out for 14 years because he wouldn't play in speed two right and the guy of course it makes me it makes clear to me that he's not a sellout because he was willing to give all his money away as well even after he made all that money in the matrix he still gave away 75 million it's an, it's crazy man I mean, obviously, that's really not something you would expect from a Hollywood celebrity in any, any way, shape, or form, especially if you haven't got a role in 14 years and all of a sudden you got a hit, you finally made some money, and you give most of it away to cancer research and things like that. Keanu Reeves donated 70% of his matrix. So he only gave, not only did he give money to cancer research, he gave money to the crew that didn't make enough in the movie. So it's absolutely amazing if you think about it that way. But you can clearly see there's something behind the scenes with all this, my friends. And you also see it with the themes in these movies. Like we talked about with the Acolytes, you can see lesbian space, which is a little off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> lesbian space. It's like a, it's like something you would think would be like, uh, like Spaceballs 2, right? Right, Spaceballs 2. Come on, man. Seriously? And they replaced the, – they're the ones who created the Force? Okay. Makes total sense, right? And then you have, of course, The Boys. Season 1, 90% high rating. I remember watching it, and, you know, honestly, I've been... I, I went back and forth on the show because I just... I didn't like the idea of a superhero being just such a scumbag, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Homelander, like, he's just so bad. Like, I watched the, the, the scene where he basically was supposed to save all the people on the plane, and he basically said, no, I'm not going to save anybody. That, that's when I actually turned off season one. I was like, I ain't going to watch this. This is ridiculous. But then I was like, okay, maybe maybe I'm just overreacting. So I started watching season two and season three. And I think I got like, there was some scene in season three. I just turned it off. I was like, I can't stand this. Like there's always one little thing they got to throw in there that just sucks. And you're just like, dude, why do you got to do that? Why do you got to destroy the show with this one stupid scene, right? Where they like, you know, slam religion or slam whatever. And apparently, if you want, if you look at this, this is kind of funny. This is Rotten Tomatoes, season one, ninety percent, season two, eighty-three percent. Look at look at look at how it goes from 85, 85 on the uh, on the on the uh, critics, right? Ninety percent on the auto uh, audience score. Then it goes to ninety-seven. Oh look, the uh, the the critics are starting to like it. The audience is like, oh, what's going on here? It's getting a little worse. Uh, then it gets worse again. And then it goes higher for the critics and it gets worse for the audience. And then you got the latest season, 51%. Now, I haven't even had a, a chance to be blessed and watch season four. I'm sure I'm going to turn it off pretty quickly. But uh, 51%, from what I understand, they're they're going all wokey on us, my friends. Super, super wokey. Kind of like the Acolytes and just completely destroying the entire TV series. Apparently, this is what they're doing. Uh, and, and it makes you wonder. It's like they want you to think a certain way, my friends. And they're willing to lose money over it. 
in any way, shape, or form. And of course, we have George Lucas talking about some of this. Here we have Asmongold covering it. He talks about how uh, George Lucas here is basically saying, and I, maybe I can play it real quick. Let me play a little bit of this. I got married. I had a different life because I knew it would take me another 10 years to make those films. And I was 69. And I said, eh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to be doing this when I'm 79. So it makes sense he wouldn't be doing this at 79 because he's an actual original storyline maker for this whole Star Wars series. And it wasn't some regurgitated garbage that you've seen numerous times before morphed into a new movie like they usually do, which is how they do it today. They usually just they play it very safe. Let's just do this. This sold really well before. Or this, let's do this. It looks just like something that's already made a lot of money before. Let's do that. They don't. His storyline was completely unique, brand new, back in the late seventies when he came out with it, Star Wars, uh, and so it was something that they had to take a little bit of a gamble on when they when they promoted it. Just like the movie The Matrix, no one wanted to put any money behind it because it was a gamble, and it turned into being a huge success, it's something original, right? So in the case of uh, George Lucas, he spent some time putting something like this together, you know, decade, right? He's going to, I'm going to do this in a decade. I'm going to take a lot of time to think this through, you know, and, it, and I've looked, I've researched some of where he gets his ideas from. He'd get them from like lots of places, scripture. He would go over to India and see some weird place and be like, I'm going to name them after this. Like, it's so weird. Like he'd just go everywhere and get these ideas from everywhere. So uh, very unique in that respect. But the fact is he obviously is, concerned with what's going on they were saying to him that his original movies were all just uh guys that were a certain of course color and uh but that's actually not even true because you had princess leia you had lots of uh and of course a lot of it was aliens i mean you had aliens in the movie i mean it's like kind of ridiculous to talk this way right you had samuel jackson he's clearly a jedi you have, I mean, you got a Wookiee now for a Jedi in the latest uh, Acolyte, but they, of course, completely destroyed that, but that's another topic. At any rate, so you get kind of the idea. Um, and I'm going to get into more of this over on my other channel, uh, God Rules. I'm kind of wondering what some of you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.